Oi pessoas, tudo bem? Bem-vindo de volta ao meu canal. Então, hoje eu vou falar sobre stereotypes. Stereotypes of British people. I don't remember this in Portuguese. I tried, I tried. So yeah, earlier in the week, I asked you guys to send me some of the stereotypes of British people to my Instagram. I wanted to know what you guys think about British people or what you guys heard about British people. And I'm here today to try to solve some of these myths, address some of these myths and answer any questions that you have about British people. And I'm going to try to establish some truth. So first of all, if you've not subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe. It's Falicom Jake. The subscribe button is down there somewhere. Don't forget to like and also check out my Instagram. It's Falicom Jake. And if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, make sure you go check them out as well. I've narrowed down some of the responses I received on Instagram. I'm going to try and read them in Portuguese. So bear with me if I do make any mistakes. There may be some words that I've never actually seen before in Portuguese. Um, so it may take me a while to, to pronounce it. Let's go for the first one. Não gostam de contato físico como nós brasileiro. So we don't like physical contact like Brazilians do. This may have some truth to it because I think British people, when we meet each other for the first time, usually just go for the handshake. It depends on like where you've traveled to in the world, if you've experienced other cultures, if your friends are from other countries, then you tend to go in with a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Um, but my advice would be to a Brazilian that's moving to UK for the first time, if the person is English, it's safe to go with a handshake because you never know how they're gonna react. It's actually one of the one of my biggest anxieties of when I go to meet some friends or like people I've never met before because it is quite common in the younger generation to go in with a hug and kiss, but you never know. And I think especially when meeting people from other nationalities, if they know I'm British, they tend to just hold out a hand for a handshake. Well, I go in for the hug and the kiss on the cheek and then they hold out a hand and it becomes this whole like awkward thing. I would say that generally true, we are not the biggest on physical contact, generally speaking. Me personally, when I meet someone, I prefer just to go for a hug. It removes any awkwardness, straight in, friendly. I'm very open and a friendly person. I'm much more content with a hug than a handshake. Vocês no café de manhã como feijão e ovos linguiça. This is talking about English breakfast. English breakfast is a traditional breakfast of ours. It includes eggs, baked beans, bacon, sausage, hash browns, um, and did I mention beans already? Beans. We don't eat this every day. Some people eat more often than others. Me personally, I don't remember the last time I had English breakfast. Sometimes I crave it, but if I was ever gonna eat it, I would usually wait till the weekend, like a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning to have it as a treat because it is quite a big breakfast. And if I ate that every day of the week, I think I might have a weight issue. <laughs> Osha da Cinco, tea at five o'clock. This is an interesting one because when I posted my cup of tea on Instagram, um, I had a few people send me a message like, Osha da Cinco. And I was like, what is this tea at five o'clock? So I had to Google it. But there is like a tradition, apparently a tradition in English that we all drink tea at 5 p.m. This is non-existent as far as I'm concerned. I've never known this tradition of drinking tea at 5 p.m. We just drink tea whenever we want. <laughs> There's no like 5 p.m. tea, it's five o'clock, 5 p.m. we must drink tea. This is a complete myth and I consider this not true at all. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, offer the Sam Sha total order. We offer tea all the time. This is definitely true. We offer tea all the time. If you ever worked in England, and one of the main things is, do you know how to make a good cup of tea? Because generally, if you work in an office, Probably every hour we're going around the office to offer people a cup of tea or a coffee. Um, we drink tea and coffee equally the same. We drink coffee with milk. Um, we don't necessarily strictly drink tea, 
Um, but yes, we do drink tea and coffee a lot. If you don't know how to make tea and you're going to live in England, make sure you know how to make tea because it is one good way to make yourself popular in a workplace. Voces Tomam. Voces Tomam Cerveja Mona. Warm beer. I've heard this one before. And I think what it is, is the rumour is being spread by someone that came to England and they went into a pub and they brought an L. And L's are not served at a very low temperature, like minus three. They're usually served around four, three Celsius because that's when you can get most of the flavour. If you serve them any colder, then you're going to lose all the flavour. Um, of course, we have like Cronenberg, Amstel, Stella, and all these are served really cold in pubs. Um, but Brazil, for me, they go that extra yard, that extra mile when it comes to serving beer cold and they serve beer freezing cold. Okay, British love fried fish and chips. Uh, yeah, it's true, it's true. We do love fish and chips. It's not our only cuisine. We have different types of uh, food in England, uh, from actually from all around the world, but we also have like British cuisine. Fish and chips is, it's sold everywhere. We generally have places like fish and chip shops. They, they are usually uh, located around residential areas. For example, my family home in Bristol, uh, there's like probably five fish and chip shops within a five minute drive. The most traditional thing to do is have fish and chips by the seaside. If you ever go to the sea, to, to the beach, um, there's always somewhere selling fish and chips. Sao Bessoas que andam bem vestidas, sao estiliosos. Are people who walk well dressed, no, I don't understand. People are well dressed and stylish in the UK. Traditionally, uh, British people always dressed well. If you look back through history, um, we were always dressed in like suits and top hats. I think this is still true in most places in the UK. We do try to dress well and present ourselves um, to look kind of smart. It doesn't have to be like smart all the time, but you know, it's one of those things that it's not necessarily 100% with everyone. If you come to London, you're going to see people dressed in probably something that might look pajamas when they're on the bus to a guy that's dressed in a suit. I believe the old traditions um, that British people always used to dress well. And I think that still runs a little bit true today. But dental care. <laughs> this is a funny one. Okay, so the myth about British people and bad dental care or we have bad teeth. Um, I'm gonna say kind of true. Firstly, dental care I don't believe is the best in the UK. We have the most expensive dental care in Europe and probably considered the worst dental care. I think this is because of the, the cost of dental care in the UK is expensive. So I believe that people do not prioritize their dental care. Um, a lot of people in school would have braces and people with braces were always bullied in school or always like made fun of. Me personally, I never had braces. But I know that in other countries, for example, it's like, it's not difficult to get braces. Um, in the UK, your teeth have to be really bad for the dentist to offer you braces. If your teeth look okay, they're not gonna offer you braces. Um, so I don't know why this is, but Generally speaking, unfortunately, dental care is not the best in the UK. Britannicals são sempre sarcásticos. Nunca sabemos, nunca sabemos o que realmente estão pensando. Okay, so British people are always sarcastic and you never know what we're really thinking. I can understand this problem for someone who didn't grow up in the UK. We have a very dry sense of humour. I can't think of any examples, but we will say something and be sarcastic, but we can say it with a very straight face, even though we're joking. Um, and if you're not used to that kind of sarcasm, that kind of humour, then you may perceive it as that we were actually being serious when we were actually only joking. Our sarcasm revolves around a lot of um, making fun of each other. If you do something wrong, then we usually make a joke about it 
and we expect to receive this back as well so if you if we make fun of you and you don't make fun of us then it's it's weird for us we kind of we expect to receive it back um, we don't take ourselves too seriously um, I think we have a very good sense of humor and it's confusing for other people to understand this. Dizem que vocês são muito educados e falam sorry e thank you por qualquer coisa. Um, we say we are polite and say sorry for everything and thank you for everything. Yeah, <laughs> we grew up with manners, no? we're taught to be say thank you and please for everything um, and to say sorry as well. Um, but I think people get this mistaken for being like timid. Um, and the thing is, is that we consider it rude if you don't say thank you. For example, if we hold out a door for you, um, if we make way for you when you're driving, we expect to say thank you. We, ex we always say thank you. We, we expect to for someone else to say thank you and we feel offended if we don't say it um it's also quite funny about the thing of sorry like we're so used to saying sorry um that yeah when someone steps on our toe they'll say sorry and then we'll say sorry <laughs> it doesn't make sense but yeah generally we're polite um but yeah make sure you you are on your p's and q's when you come to england make sure you say please and thank you because otherwise we get a little bit upset <laughs> Britannicals, luvas, sobretudo, buena, guarachuva. <laughs> I don't know where this comes from. It must be like something to do with Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> because unless it's raining, then yeah, maybe some people wear that. But we're certainly not wearing that in the summer. Um, and I don't think if you come to this country, you're going to see it. It's not very common to wear. So I'm going to have to say false. Que britannicos são frijos e fechados mais do que americanos. So British people are more cold than Americans. Yeah, I think Americans are generally more friendly than us. Um, British people are a bit more reserved. I, just, I think we just have this kind of um, hard exterior. And if you break the ice with us, we become very friendly. Um, I think initially we're just a bit more reserved and we can come across a little bit cold. But once you get to know us, we are very friendly. A rivalidade dos times e a maior do mundo. Team rivalry, football teams. So they're the biggest in the world. We have big football rivalries. People take football very seriously here. Some people say British people don't have emotions. If you go to a football match, you're definitely going to see grown men cry. I think this is something that we definitely have in common with Brazil is the love for football. I personally love football. I grew up watching football. A lot of teams have big rivalries, whether they are, you know, factually the biggest in the world. I know there's a lot of different countries that love football and have big, big rivalries. Um, but yes, I can only say that England, the UK, we all love football here. Best accent ever. Is it true? I'm going to let you guys decide. <laughs> I'm not going to comment. Por que a Inglaterra não colonizou o Brasil? Prefira muito mais hoje estar falando inglês que o português. I don't know what to say to that. No comment. Que fica mal humorados quando está calor porque não estão acostum acostumados. E verdade? Não verdade. If it's sunny in England, we're not in a bad mood. It's like people will literally go out and celebrate if it's sunny here. The pubs will be busy, parks will be busy with people drinking, having picnics, enjoying themselves. Um, I don't think we're in a bad mood when it's sunny. We're happy when it's sunny because it rains a lot here. So when it's sunny and it's hot, we love it and we always do the most. Britannicals beben muito e em qualquer, qualquer momento. Mesmo quando não há a social especial. British people drink a lot at any time. There doesn't have to be in a special occasion. True. <laughs> we like to drink. We like to party. If you go out on a Friday or Saturday night, you're going to see people drinking a lot. Monday to Thursday, probably just a few beers. But when it comes to Friday, Saturday, yes, British people love to go out and we do drink quite a lot. Boys que quebra o gelo são pessoas bondosas. 
bondos, bondosas, dispostas a ajuda e explicar. Yes, okay, so this is what I said earlier, that we have a hard exterior um, and once you break the ice, we're very nice people. We like to help a lot. I, I consider us helpful people. I consider us kind people. It's just the hard exterior, the initial cold front that we have that gives people the wrong impression. British people are nice. <laughs> Muito maquillagem. Muito, muita maquillagem e... Oh, oh, like makeup, makeup, like fake stuff. Lashes, makeup, lips, hair, tan. Yes, um, certainly more recently when I was growing up as a teenager, I think that a lot of girls would wear makeup. Now it's evolved to like fake lips, um, fake tan, uh, fake hair. Yeah, I would say true. I would say true. Not everyone, of course, this is not to generalize, but yeah, there is a big kind of a culture of girls wearing makeup, fake lips, uh, fake lashes, fake hair, all that stuff. Você são pontuais. We are punctual. I think so. I arrived to work 15 minutes early. <laughs> so yes, it's very punctual. But I don't know, in my industry, the industry I work, if we set a time to start filming at 8 a.m., then you need to be ready to film at 8 a.m. You can't arrive at 8 a.m. and expect to start work and not be behind others because when we say 8 a.m. we mean you arrive 20 minutes early and you get ready to start at 8 a.m. So yeah, I think we are punctual. I don't know about other nations and their punctuality, but I can say British people are probably quite punctual. I don't get it. I have no idea where this comes from. Yeah, I've got so many responses there and we don't like to show it. What can I say? Let me try and think of where this myth comes from. So Brazilians are saying that British people don't like to show it. Um, maybe because in Brazil it's really hot and like when I was in Brazil, it was common for me to shower like three times a day. When I'm in the UK, it's it, like, especially in the winter, it's really cold, but of course I take a shower every day. Um, and I think most people do, but I wouldn't take three showers a day in England in the winter because when you get in the shower, it's freezing cold, especially at night time. Um, I think it's more common to have baths as well, like more so in the winter. Um, we like to have a bath because it's warm. It keeps you warm in the winter. It's nice to lay in a bath when it's cold. Um, not so much a shower when it's cold. Have you ever been in a shower when it's like minus five? It's like horrible when you get out of the shower, but <laughs> no, generally speaking, yes, I think British people do shower every day. <laughs> Me personally, I shower every day. I'm hygienic. I don't know where this myth comes from. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope I was able to break some of the myths about British people and the country of England. Um, some of them are very funny. I find it quite funny reading them. It's always interesting to hear the perceptions of other people about the nation that I grew up. Um, I find it interesting, especially for people that's never actually visited England. It's always interesting to hear what they've just heard um, from speaking from no experience whatsoever. And I'm always happy to address those myths and discuss them. And I like to let people know about the country that I grew up, the country that I'm from. I like to tell people, I like to inform people and, you know, give people an insight what it's like to grow up as a British person. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're enjoying my channel. Make sure you subscribe to it. It's Falecon Jake. Make sure you like and make sure you go follow me on Instagram if you have not already. And don't forget to check out the rest of my videos that I've been making. I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao.